Welcome to the Social Regressive. At this point in time, there must be literally dozens of manufacturers that have taken the original Harris bipod formula and they've kind of come up with their own variations on it. And what we're looking at today is a model that you can actually buy at your local Walmart. Uh, these things have actually been in stock at Walmart for a good long while. These are the Blackhawk Sportster Traverse Track. And these things run anywhere from about 40 bucks to 60 bucks. Kind of depends on where you buy them and what height you get. Uh, the, I have two different models that we're looking at here. This is the, the shortest model. This is the six to nine. And then we have this gigantic seated one. I wanted to take a look at the two extremes and they're actually two extremes that I use out in the field. This is gonna be great for your range uh, type of shooting and I actually have a whole video. I'll link to it over here. Uh, where a buddy and I discuss when you use different bipod heights and what their different purposes are. There's a thought that if you just get lower that things automatically get better. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes you need a giant bipod like this one. Now if you like reviews of inexpensive gear like this, then uh, please consider uh, chipping in a buck a month on Patreon. My patrons of the Destructive Arts help to provide interesting gear for me to review, and they provide things like, you know, the lights that we're using today, camera gear, things like that. But let's dig into these things and let's see how they work. The Sportster Bipod series includes four different heights, ranging from this six to nine right here, all the way up to this nearly 30 inch seated bipod right here. And like I mentioned, there are reasons to get different bipod heights and maybe to have several available. So check out that video that I did with Jesse uh, where we kind of discussed where to use some of these different bipod heights. In addition to the height choices, you can also choose how flexible or how stable your bipod is. The basic Sportster model, everything locks down really tightly and there isn't this great big thumb nut here on the back. On the pivot model, when you add this, if you loosen up that right there, it allows you to cant your rifle back and forth like so. So if you're on not entirely level terrain and you need to get that last little bit of leveling, that's going to give you that little bit of flexibility there. And then you can just lock that down. This model is the traverse track, which also adds panning. So if you have your legs locked down in a really good position, uh, and this is something that you know most folks aren't really going to be needing, but if you're out in the wild and uh, you know, you're know you actually in some really rough terrain and there are really only a couple of places where your legs can fit, like between rocks, that sort of thing, then this can be kind of handy. So you can actually pan the rifle around. And now I think there may be a misconception that this is something that you can use while taking the shot. And I think that this would be kind of a difficult way to do things. I wouldn't really recommend it. In my testing so far, you know, maybe if you locked yourself down really good and you left that nut uh, kind of loose, maybe you could uh, kind of manhandle this thing around and actually point it for, say, a moving target or something. But for the most part, I would say no. Uh, what this is useful for is getting stable and then you lock it down for your shot. It's just a little bit too wobbly uh, in my opinion, when that thing is loose, for you to be able to use this, uh, say, on a moving target or something. I might instead just rely on whatever flexibility is in the legs and everything uh, to get that little bit of motion. To extend the legs, simply pull and they lock into place. And then to retract, you press this little button right here and spring tension pulls the leg up into the body. Now here's where things get a little bit funky. If you need to have, if you're on uneven terrain and you want one of the legs to be in kind of a midway position, it's a little bit tricky to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that this uh, little nut is loose right here. I'm going to have to pull down to this position and then tension that right there. And this is not the easiest thing to do one handed as I've tested out in the field. Uh, sometimes I've gotten it to work, sometimes I need to bring in a second hand to make sure that everything gets tightened down just right. Um, but yeah, I think that maybe if the springs were reversed, so the springs were more for pushing the leg down, that would be a little bit easier. Then you could just use the weight of the rifle to push things around. But uh, just keep that in mind that this is not the quickest thing if you're on just slightly uneven terrain and you need to get everything locked down again. Another way to handle that uneven terrain is to use this 
nut right here if you have either the pivot or the traverse track model. So you could get your legs totally uneven, like say this right here, flip this, and then your rifle is level. But you can see that this is not optimal. Now this is assuming that you know we're on a flat surface here. The only reason I would do this is if I were on some kind of uneven surface anyway, like I'm perched up on top of a rock or something. And you can see that, yeah, okay, it's not going to be entirely level, uh, you know, if, unless I really get in and get a perfect position using this screw right here. But for hasty shots, uh, this will work. And, you know, I have done this out in the field too. And yeah, it did work. The legs fold forward simply like this. There's no kind of lock or anything. Just push and pull. And the spring tension wants to either pull it up into that top position or pull it back. And this spring tension is not huge. So be careful when you're shooting this. Uh, if you're pulling back at all on the rifle, it's going to feel like it's folding the legs and it will actually do that on you. Uh, so make sure that you do the proper thing when you're shooting with this kind of bipod where you put some forward pressure onto the rifle, kind of load up those legs, and that's going to prevent that jump and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and it's also going to keep these legs from buckling on you accidentally. These feet are made of a very hard rubber. I anticipate that they'll last a very long time. And these dig in really well into grass and dirt. On concrete, however, since they are so hard, uh, they do have a tendency to slip just a little bit. This seated model has all the same features as this short one. It just adds one extra trick so that you can get out to that nearly 30 inches of total height. And that is, in addition to this one leg that you can pull out, you get a second one. So you get two buttons to retract these things in. The way you attach any Harris style bipod to a rifle is not what I would call quick attach or quick detach. You have this screw right here. You just loosen this up so that you can push these two metal tabs up through the base plate. And then you have these little pins that kind of act like claws. And these are going to grab on to two sides of your swivel stud. And then as you tighten this screw right here, it's going to pull those claws in and pull everything down. And the rifle is going to be kind of sucked down onto the top of this. And you do have this nice rubber stuff here on the, uh, the Blackhawk models. It's going to protect the finish on your rifle and it's going to make sure that everything locks down nicely. The Blackhawk bipods appear to be made mostly of aluminum. All these pieces right here that look like they should be steel, I'm pretty sure these are aluminum. It does not attract a magnet. So you get some steel parts like the springs, the screws, and then you have some kind of high tension areas like the sleeves on the legs here. But yeah, for the most part, it's aluminum. It's very lightweight. My final takeaway on these Blackhawk bipods is that as long as you recognize the limitations of the system overall, that this thing is going to work very well for hobbyists and hunters alike. You have the quick deployment, you have the quick retraction. The thing overall is rather lightweight, even for this kind of tall model. And everything does lock down pretty solidly as long as you crank this screw down and apply that forward pressure that you're really supposed to when you're taking a shot off a bipod like this. And overall, it's going to be very lightweight on your pocketbook. It's going to be easy to either outfit a bunch of rifles that you have, or if you're a shooter on a budget, you're looking for a bipod that's really going to work well, that you can trust, and you just don't have you know, all that much money to play with. I gotta say that in the testing that I've done with these so far, I've found them to be reliable and you know, a good solid platform for what I'm doing. They work well. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.